here at Dry Creek Ranger School. Uh, going to try to make another video this morning. Been uh, kind of out of pocket last three days. Been up out of Gunnison doing a lot of riding. Going to try to catch up. If you uh, have posted comments or asked questions on there and I haven't answered right away, I first off, I appreciate the comments and the questions. Um, and, uh, and I apologize if it takes me a little bit to get to answer you. I, I work full time and sometimes it's kind of hard for me to, to get the time to get in here and get this cat, uh, caught up. Uh, but I will, I will get in and get it caught up and I appreciate all the response I've gotten on here. Um, and I understand that some of the videos, I've got several comments on the volume on the videos. You need to be aware that some of those older videos uh, were filmed on like a, a $100 Android. And so we have a different uh, phone that we're filming on now. And, uh, and we have a microphone. So hopefully this will work. You keep asking me to turn the volume up on the video. I don't know how to do that. Uh, the best I know is the volume does what it does. And, and that's what you get. So if there's a way to do that, I'll try to figure that out. But in the meantime, we'll do what we can. Um, when I was a little kid in Kentucky, about 10 years old, uh, my mama was making pinto beans in the kitchen one day uh, in a pressure cooker. Now, I don't know if you know what a pressure cooker is, but a pressure cooker is a, a big pot and with a big heavy lid. And there's tabs on the pot and on the lid, so you set the lid on the pot, and then you turn it, and those tabs lock it in place. Uh, and then there's a valve in, on sticking out the top. And so you put heat under it. You got your pinto beans and your water in there, or if you're canning, uh, when Mama was canning from the garden, um, and it builds up to pressure. And then there's a disc, a weighted disc that sits on that valve on top. And uh, so when the pressure in the pr in the pressure cooker gets to a certain level, anything above that kind of picks up and moves that disc, and that disc lets the pressure escape. I call it, we called it, I called it a jiggler, that little jiggler. And I spent a lot of really nice days in my childhood hearing that jiggler on that pressure cooker in the kitchen while Mama was canning or making pinto beans, just kind of jiggling and, and stuttering and spitting and letting that pressure off. Well, one day... That jiggler got stuck for whatever reason. I don't know. And it didn't jiggle and it didn't let the pressure off. And until all of a sudden the pressure had got so big and built up so strong in that pressure cooker that that jiggler blew off. And it geysered pinto beans all over my mama's kitchen ceiling. Uh, when we left, I think there were still pinto bean stains on that ceiling. Same thing with your horse. Same thing with your horse. Now, a lot of times we'll have a horse that can't be still. Now, maybe the horse is moves all the time at the trailer. Maybe the horse moves when you go to get on, the horse is just goes to walk off. Or you're going down the trail and you want to walk, everybody's walking, you want to walk down the trail, and the horse wants to jig. It wants to stand there and trot in place. It wants to move. It cannot be still. You're out there and Whatever pace you want, the horse is like, no, no, I got to go. I got to go. Well, the worst thing that we can do in a situation like this is just pull back and stay in the horse's mouth. Now, the horse is not making a mental choice. I want to do this. It's a physiological thing internal. The horse says, I have to go. I have too much energy. I have too much whatever, and I have to go. Now, it might be from a number of sources, a number of reasons. You might be feeding your horse too hot. A lot of people feed the horses too hot, too much grain, too much alfalfa. And it's like giving your kid two Red Bulls and a Pop-Tart and expect them to sit down and do math. They're just too jacked up. They can't do it. It's not fair. That, that's part of it. Part of it's just some horses are just naturally like that. They're just naturally more hyper. Uh, might be from fear. Might, they might be nervous. They might just be excited. They might be happy to see other horses. There's a number of reasons. But the thing is, it's coming physically internally. Their pot is boiling, okay? And so when you take your horse and you're constantly pulling your horse in, pulling your horse in, pulling your horse in, 
you're sticking that jiggler and the pressure's just building inside. And a lot of times that's where the wrecks come from. That's where the horse bolts. That's where the horse goes crashing through the trees, where the horse does something that we really don't want the horse to do. Uh, and instead of tightening that jiggler down more so that the horse would be still, let the pressure off. Now, how does that look like? Well, it could, it could look different ways depending on your situation and you and your horse. But if you're, let, let's take, for instance, you want to walk down the trail and your horse just head up, wants to jig. He's just excited, wants to jig, wants to go, wants to go. You should have a calm parental discussion with your horse. This is something like that should look like. The horse says, Daddy, I got to go. I got to go. Uh, I got to try. You have to try. I, I've got to try. I, I have to. Okay, well, I want you to do what you have to do. You try. But I tell you what, while you're trotting, let's trot in circles. Your horse can pick the dance, but you pick the music. Your horse can pick the dance, but you always choose the music. If your horse has to trot, let your horse trot. But let them trot in circles right there. And I tell you what, while we're at it, let's make this circle smaller. Let's make it smaller. Let's come. You need to trot. I don't want to take that away from you, but let's make it smaller. Well, Daddy, I don't want to trot no more. You don't want to trot? No. They come down into a walk, which is what you wanted. Then as you come out of the circle, you come out of the circle and head on down the trail. Oh, Daddy, I got to trot. I got to trot. You have to trot? I have to trot. Okay, well, I don't want to take that away from me. You can trot, but let's trot in a circle. Let's trot in a circle. And the circle, okay, let's make the circle smaller. Down, down, down. Daddy, I don't want to trot no more. I think I'm just going to walk. Well, if you want to walk, you can walk. And come out of that trot and let them walk. Now, you may have to do that half a dozen times. But eventually, eventually, they're going to move their feet a whole lot more trotting in a circle. They have to think a whole lot more. And they're going to calm down and settle down. They're going to choose that they want to walk. They'll choose. And it's a whole lot better than just pulling back and holding. Uh, you have a horse that wants to walk off when you go to get in the saddle. Now, that's one of my big, big pet peeves, one of my cardinal sins, okay? Well, instead of pulling and holding your horse and trying to, trying to physically stop your horse, your horse is excited, your horse says, we want to go, we got to go, the horses or other horses are leaving, set it up when you're at the house uh, to do have a training session, all right? Be safe about this. But you know what the horse is going to do. Let the horse do what it's going to do. Now that just, but think about it. They want to dance, but you pick the music. So I do this all the time. I've trained a lot of horses to stand still when I'm out. And I do this every time. I know what they're going to do. So I get set up to get in the saddle. And I put just the barest toe of my boot in. And I pull this near rein. I pull it, uh. So it's a little shorter, so their nose is tipped to me. And whatever kind of rain, and I usually have split uh, leather split reins, whatever kind of leather rein I have, I have it so that um, I can drop the one rein and keep this near leather rein in my hand. Or if I have a macate, I've got the lead rope over my, in the crook of my shoulder. And so, but I put toe in my boot in, I go to get in like I normally would, and I know they're gonna step off. They say, I've got to go. Well, I don't, whoa, no, you can't go. As soon as they take a step, I step back out of the stirrup and I smooch them on and I make them keep going. And I make them go in circles. I make them go in circles on the ground and then I'll make them figure eight. Never let them stomp their feet and I'll make them figure eight. And then we'll back up. And then we'll back up in a circle. We'll back up a circle and we'll come back and we'll do more circles. And then I'll pull them up, never yelling. Never whipping, never excited, never, not punishment. You want to go, then you can go. But you have to go in the direction that I want. I'm picking the tune now. And then I'll pull them up and I'll say, whoa. And I'll scratch them for a minute. Let them stand there for a second, soak and think about what just happened. And then I'll begin the process again. And if they want to walk off, then I let them walk off and I stay on the ground. But I make them move. I make them move where they don't want to move. And usually it takes about two or three of those and the horses, you know what? Forget it. I'm just not so excited anymore. And they'll stand still. And then you get up in the saddle. Sit down. Sit there for a second. Don't let them take a step. 
until you squeeze with your legs and they move on. You wouldn't take a child, if you got a, I've raised seven children, my wife and I have seven children we raised, the youngest is 19, okay? Three boys and four girls. You wouldn't take a rambunctious boy, it's about six years old, needs to do his homework, and he can't be still, because he's a boy, and he's just all excited, and he's like, son, you need to do your homework, you need to sit down and be still. You wouldn't duct tape him to the chair. After a while, you'd take him outside, and you'd say, here, son, I'll give you $2 for every chicken you catch and bring me in the next 30 minutes. And you send that boy out to go chase chickens for a while. Don't make him stop. Don't tie that jiggler down on that pressure cooker in there. It's going to blow up. Let it jiggle. Get that pressure out. Let him go run around. And then let him come back and do the work. Okay? You got to think about this. We got to be logical. We got to be reasonable. Your horse may not know the reason, but your horse has a reason for everything. So instead of saying, I don't care what the reason is, stop doing that, take the time and care, care enough, be logical enough, be reasonable enough to address the reason. It's a symptom. If your child has a cold, if your child has a runny nose, you're not going to put corks in the nose to stop the runny nose. The runny nose is a symptom of a bigger issue. The bigger issue is the cold. You care about your child enough to, to diagnose the issue. The issue is a runny nose. Why is the nose running? The child has a cold. Well, let's give the child some vitamin C, some echinacea, uh, and let's help the child get over the cold and the runny nose will take care of itself. Well, the situation with your horse is often the same thing. The acting up is a symptom of a different issue. Care enough and be thinking enough to address the bigger issue and the symptom will take care of itself. Okay? So that's just a thought this morning. It might help you out. Um, so if you like the content, again, click like. The, the, um, the reactions that I've, I've had the last couple weeks, these videos, is just, I, it's just blowing my mind. Uh, and so I, I really want to thank you for it. I, I really appreciate it. Um, and if you let folks know that there's a guy on there on YouTube that might just have a little tiny tidbit of something that, may get you to thinking, may help you figure it out for yourself. I'm not trying to give you the answers. I don't have the answers, but I may have a little bit of info or just a thought to help you figure your answer out for yourself. Um, and uh, so I, I want to thank you guys. Um, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe for me and uh, hit that bell so I notify you when I put out more content. And uh, be safe. Be logical, be reasonable, and have fun. And we'll catch you next time.